Can I get a good day, good day? Good day. How are you all today? All right. My name is Dylan Mohammed, and I would like to introduce my co-host, Soleil. She was a past student from St. Patrick Newton Girls RC, and she's now a Form 1 student in Bishop's Amnesty High School. Uh, she won the category of poetry in Sandfest, well, obviously in her category, and she also performed in Kids So Amazing. May I welcome my co-host, Soli Hills. Thank you, Dylan. I would now like to introduce my co-host, Dylan Mohammed from St. Anthony's College in Form 5. He performs soca songs, poetry, and he does comedy, so expect some jokes today. We are awaiting Grenada, so I would just like to talk about what really is the season of creation. Did you know the season of creation is our annual celebration, Sole? Yes, I did. Where Christians take place, where Christians all around the world join together to pray, reflect, and take action to protect our common home? Yes, I did. Well, so they hit me with a fun fact. <laughs> yes, well, you know, the Franciscan Institute began celebrating the season of creation in 2018 with a challenge, which saw students displaying their creativity with school projects, assemblies, and spoken word, among other special events, all in the name of climate action to protect all come on home and ensure that future generations can enjoy the marvel of God's creation. So, did you know that we, in this competition this year, we have received a total of 178 entries? Yes, we did. Okay, guys, I just got word that Grenada is here. Can I have a round of applause for Grenada? <laughs> protocols are observed. Members of the Catholic clergy, religious sisters, members of all other faith and religious traditions, distinguished members, distinguished award recipients in three islands, Grenada, Carioco, and Petite Martinique, St. Lucia, Trinidad, and Tobago. Specially invited guests, members of the media, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the fifth annual St. Francis Canticle Creation Award Ceremony. Please stand for the national anthem of Grenada, Caricou, and Pitti Martinique, St. Lucia, and Trinidad and Tobago. Thank you. 
Thank you, Cadence. Now we will have the national anthem of St. Lucia sung by students of St. Mary's College, Castries. Please be seated. Sons and daughters of St. Lucia, love the land that gave us birth, land of beaches, hills, and valleys, fair as the love of the earth, national anthem of Grenada Karikou no, and Pity Martinique. And of course we pledge ourselves to thee. Cast hearts and hands in unity to reach our destiny. Ever conscious of God, being proud. Faith and courage, aspire, build that fans as one people, one flag. Our nation. Please be seated. Welcome to the fifth annual St. Francis Canticle Creation Award Ceremony. This award ceremony is hosted by the Franciscan Institute for Personal and Family Development. Develop 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 Develop. A ministry of the Sisters of the Sorrowful Mother. Today is a special day. We are celebrating the outstanding performance of all persons who took part in the Season of Creation Challenge. From Grenada, Caricou, and Pitti, Martinique, St. Lucia, and Trinidad, and Tobago. This year's theme is Listen to the Voice of Creation. The symbol is the burning bush taken from Exodus chapter 3, verses 1 to 12. Many schools, parishes, and youth groups from the three islands expressed their creativity in four categories. Song, art, skit, and eco project. We received 178 entries. 14 primary schools participated. 14 from Trinidad and Tobago. Eight secondary schools participated. Five from Trinidad, one from Grenada, two from St. Lucia. Four parishes, two from Trinidad, one from Grenada, one from St. Lucia, one youth group from Grenada. Let us now 
give a big round of applause to all participants and winners from Grenada Carioco and Petite Martinique, St. Lucia, and Trinidad and Tobago. In the spirit of St. Francis, patron saint of ecology, who taught us how to pray with all of creation, let us now stand to pray with gratitude and reverence for creation. Our opening prayer will be done by Widmeya Diogene, a presentation brother. In the name of the Father, the name of the Father of, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear God, our beloved Creator, we come to you on this special day to thank you for all of creation. We sing of the beauty that greets us each day with the blessings of land, water, and sky. We pray in gratitude for bountiful harvest, the awesome colors of autumn leaves, early sunsets, and fresh clean air. As Moses gazed upon the burning bush, caring spirit, God now hears the cry of the earth. God is hearing the cry of his suffering people, pain brought on by wars, poverty, persecution, violence, and an earth that is being exploited and destroyed by an indifferent. First Lord, to listen to the cry of our common home. Help us to hear the prayers of those who are most affected by climate change and the loss of biodiversity. We pray, dear God, that we use our youthful gifts and talents to answer the call to serve our planet. Teach us to care for Earth, to free our waters from pollution, to harvest the warmth of our sun, and to respect the rights of all pieces. May we willingly share the gifts of your goodness with one another. We ask this of you, God of the universe. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Brother Wade Meyer, for leading us in prayer, setting the tone for our ceremony. Praise be, my Lord, for all creation. We now invite Sister Jillian Jerome, Delegation Super Superior of the Sisters of the Sorrowful Mother, to officially welcome you. So good morning to all. <clears throat> I stand on the protocol that was already established. On the behalf of the Franciscan Institute, which is a ministry of the Congregation of the Sisters of the Sorrowful Mother, and especially that of the Sisters of the St. Francis of Assisi Delegation Caribbean, I join I in extending a warm Franciscan welcome to all present at our fifth annual St. Francis Canticle Creation Award Ceremony under the theme, Listen to the Voice of Creation. We are delighted to have each of you present with us on this beautiful day. Permit me, however, to particularly extend warmest welcome to our Superior General, Sister Kathy Hannigan, and a Sister Superior General, Sister Julie Peters, our Bishop Gabriel Mazze, who will deliver our opening remarks, our Bishop Jason Garden, Bishop Clyde Martin Harvey, and Honorable Karen James from Grenada. Thanks to each of you 
for taking time off from your busy schedules to join us. Pope Francis reminded us that to care for creation is a moral issue. Recognizing that this moral issue is the responsibility of each of us, we, the Sisters of the Sorrowful Mother, continue to do our part in pledging our commitment to raise this awareness, galvanizing our efforts to encourage all to be better custodians of Mother Earth, our common home. The Canticle Challenge is one of the ways in which we do so, and we particularly engage the energy and passion of our students, youth, and young adults in spreading this message in creative ways. From the submissions, it is evident that during the months of May to July, our students, youth, young adults, and those who supported and mentored them have had some wonderful conversations and engagements around the theme, listen to the voice of creation. You have produced some exceptional creative pieces, calling us forth to do a better job at honoring and protecting our environment and inviting us to deeper gratitude to God for our common home. Thanks to each of you for your contributions and for engaging the task of being climate ambassadors. So today, students and youth, we are happy to be here to honor you and publicly celebrate your achievements. I invite us all to truly be engaged and listen. May our time together call us forth to take action, renew our sacred, our sacred respect for our common home and secure a better future for our world. Once again, welcome. May God bless us all. Thank you, Sister Julie and Jerome, for your warm welcome. Now we have a special song performance by Chad Welsh from St. Peter's R.C. Parish, Gore of Grenada. Chad emerged as the winner in the song category, and his song, Flying High, was composed by him to reflect on the theme, Listen to the Voice of Creation. creation you see 
Wow, Chad. What a great voice. 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 Wow, Chad. What a great voice. voice. And a meaningful and a meaning. composition. Let's give him a huge, a huge round of applause. <laughs> Don't forget to leave your comments on Zoom chat. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a Zoom chat. Uh, if, you, if you are on the Zoom, you can comment and leave your thoughts. We now invite the most reverend Archbishop Gabriel Malazir, Archbishop of the Archdiocese of Castries, St. Lucia, to give the opening remarks. Uh, dear bishops, well, the bishops, organizers of this award ceremony, and young people, awardees, thank you for inviting me to make these short opening remarks to such an important group of people. A group which has the potential to make a huge difference in today's world. I wish to begin my presentation with a quote from our Holy Father's encyclical letter Laudato Si, on care for our common home. And I quote, the urgent challenge to protect our common home includes a concern to bring the whole human family together to seek a sustainable and integral development. For we know that things can change. The creator does not abandon us. He never forsakes his loving plan or repents of having created us. Humanity still has the ability to work together in building our common home. Hey, I want to recognize, encourage, and thank all those striving in countless ways to guarantee the protection of the home which we share. Particular Appreciation is shown to those who tirelessly seek to resolve the tragic effects of environmental degradation on the lives of the, whole, of the world's poorest. Young people demand change. They wonder how everyone can claim to be building a better future without thinking of the environmental crisis and the, the sufferings of the excluded. I urgently appeal then for a new dialogue about how we are shaping the future of our planet. We need a conversation which includes everyone. Since the environmental challenge we are undergoing and its human roots concern and affect all of us. As the bishops of Southern Africa have stated, Everyone's talent and involvement are needed to redress the damage caused by human abuse of God's creation. All of us can cooperate as instruments of God for the care of creation, each according to his or her own culture, experience, involvements, and talents. Laudato Si, paragraphs 13 and 14. In my estimation, there is, not, there is really no other way to address the escalating global environmental crisis, that is, the effects of climate change, except to get involved. And from your perspective, getting involved from a tender age, hence the channeling of this program through the schools. There is no other way except facing the situation head on which is what this ceremony signifies. My role here is to wish you well in that endeavor. The truth is, dear friends, there are millions of people who do not care a hoot as to which direction the world takes. Their concern for the world is basically utilitarian. What they can get out of the world. It is also minimalistic meaning that people aim at getting maximum result from, for, for success in the world from minimal efforts. This is, this is a general disposition. The language of sacrifice is foreign in that scheme. This is by far the easiest path to take. It is the path of greatest temptation 
It is the path of greatest ease, but it is the path of greatest irresponsibility. And unfortunately, it is the path that the modern world purports. When I see people driving along the highways and throwing garbage, maybe KFC boxes and bottles out of the car windows, it is clear to me that those persons think only of themselves and the conveniences. In that case, the relief of a, a piece of garbage, not realizing that, a, that that single act, if multiplied a few times across the country, can cause serious problems for the country's citizens and the general health. Just incidentally, I returned from Trinidad earlier this week, in fact, on Tuesday, and it rained practically every day. In most cases, it did not rain more than an hour, and then the streets were flooded. My conclusion was that it was a problem of drainage, water access that was hindered by the clogging of the drains. Now, the multiplicity of these irresponsible actions have devastating effects. Now, I'm using the example of Trinidad, not because it is worse than any other place, but this was my experience, the experience I had just a week ago, or this week, in fact. We can multiply this, this across the islands and the mainland ter territories of the Guyanas. The reality of climate change, to my mind, is a perpetual exercise of shooting our, ourselves in the feet and hindering our ability to run and to sprint with the process of, of healing of the world. Every little bit that we can do to change the course that the world is taking, everything we can do to change that trajectory is an effort in the right direction. This, to my mind, is what you are about. And I want to commend you for it. This is tantamount, to my mind, to the work of salvation. It is as divine a responsibility as it is human and as it is social. So my advice to you is go for it. And go with God. Listen to the voice of creation. Be ambassadors of creation. Be climate ambassadors as our, our welcoming sister reminded us. Just incidentally, I was visiting a CC in the month of June, June, July, and uh, I came across this uh, canticle, canticle of the creatures. And I bought a few copies, you know, to share with my friends. And I want to conclude with this prayer of St. Francis, canticle of the creatures. Most high, all-powerful, good Lord. Yours are the praises, the glory, and the honor, and all blessing. To you, to you alone, most high, do we belong. And to no, and no human is worthy to mention, to mention your name. Praise be you, my Lord, with all your creatures, especially Sir Brother Son who is the day and through whom you give us light. And he is beautiful and radiant with great splendor and bears a likeness of you, most holy one. Praise be you, my Lord, through Sister Moon and the stars in heaven, you formed them clear and precious and beautiful. Praise be you, my Lord, through Brother Wind and through the air, cloudy and serene, and every kind of weather through whom you give sustenance to your creatures. Praise be you, my Lord, through Sister Water, who is very useful and humble and precious and chaste. Praise be you, my Lord, through Brother Fire, through whom you light the night, and he is beautiful and playful and robust and strong. 
Praise be you, my Lord, through our sister Mother Earth, who sustains and governs us, and who produces various fruits with colored flowers and herbs. Praise be you, my Lord, through those who give pardon for your love and bear infirmity and tribulation. Blessed are those who endure in peace, for by you, Most High, shall they be crowned. Praise be you, my Lord, through our sister, bodily death, from whom no one living can escape. Woe to those who die in mortal sin. Blessed are those whom death will find in your most holy will, for the second death shall do them no harm. Praise and bless my Lord and give him thanks and serve him with all humility. Amen. Thank you, Most Reverend Archbishop Gabriel Malte, for your words of wisdom and encouragement. Dylan and I are now excited to announce the winners of the Season of Creation Challenge 2022. We invite you to be attentive and join the excitement. This year, the categories are Song, Art, Skit, and Eco Project. We invite Mrs. Maria Samad and Monsignor Patrick Anthony, two regional judges, to present this year's winners of the Season of Creation Challenge. Good morning to everyone. Good morning, Monsignor. everyone. <laughs> Monsignor Patrick, Anthony, and I are happy to be the presenters today of the winners of the fifth Season of Creation Challenge Award. And we thank all those who are receiving awards and those who participated for being stewards, sharing your talents. We start with the song category. The from St. Lucia, we have Avalon Charles. Avalon is from Vilfort Parish. She's over 18 years. And she did a song, Nature is Calling. She was inspired by the chirping of birds, the gust of winds passing through trees, and the poor in need of and the poor in need of help. And she felt the need to do something to respond to this, the problems. The birds sung because they needed something. She created this song so that others can hear and act on it as well, because she felt the more people involved means there will be more productivity. Avalon was also a participant in 2021. Congratulations. Our next winner is from Grenada, who former this morning, Chad Welsh. Chad is no stranger to the season of creation. He was a winner last year, and this year we heard his song, Flying High. He was inspired by capturing the different animals, people, places, and amazing landscape of Grenada in his song. And he responded by being an advocate to keeping the, the environment healthy in his island. Congratulations, Chad. Yes. Um, hello, everyone from St. Lucia. Bonjour, Creole. This is our Creole Heritage Weekend. So, bonjour, Creole, tout le monde. I couldn't help it when I heard Bishop Malze reading from the Candle of, Cre of Creatures, how um, the Rastas, the brothers were there, Francis, man. Most high, most high. <laughs> so our next winner, it is from the primary school division, St. Mary's Bukurapo Girls RC. We have 11 year old Ronaya Wickham from Standard Four with a beautiful song poem called What I See. It's, it's, it's a very touching little song poem in which Ronaya says, now, what I see, I see children in glee. And then she goes on and develops and 
There then comes a point where it says, and now I see, what I see is pollution everywhere. Nothing left pure, no right of fresh air. A beautifully touching little song poem by Ronai Wickham. Let's big up Ronai Wickham for that. <laughs> Our next winner from a secondary school is from St. Anthony's College, 17 year old Jelani Francis from Form 5. And Jelani did a creative production from a simple experience. He was hearing wood being chopped. Chop, 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 chop. And the chopping of the wood reminded him of the degradation of the forest and of creation. And that stimulated him to create the song, a beautiful song that he presented to us. Let us big up Jelani for that creativity and response to what he saw in creation and the advocacy that his song advocates. Let's hear it for Jelani. Our next winner is from the parish of Mary Immaculate Queen of the Universe RC, Bogmulatres, 18 year old Clarice Biput. Clarice has what they call a tender ballad. <laughs> it's Dear Yoko. Clarice saw these a little baby parakeet and two, two, two little parakeets. And she was moved with tenderness at the vulnerability of the parakeet. And so she wrote a very moving song and her voice is so beautiful. She said to the parakeet, you are beautiful. Green, yellow, feathers of blue. Why should anyone or anything dare to hurt you? Jayoko by Clarice Deeper. Let's hear for Clarice. <laughs> honorable mentions now, Maria? Yes, the honorable mentions in song. We had Kristen Smith from Trinidad and Tobago. Kristen did a, pro a poem where she encountered the rustling of the trees and the wind and the animals of nature. And she felt calm while listening to the sound of the trees and was moved to write the poem after seeing the amazing sights. Let's give Kristen a round of applause. 11 years old, St. Mary's Mukarapu School. Our next memorable honorable mention is Isaiah Regis from St. Anthony's College, Form 1 in Trinidad and Tobago. Isaiah did one of our national songs, which we call a Calypso. He saw the rivers being polluted and did not want to go and bathe or picnic there. Young people especially were talking about the pollution and he wrote the Calypso, hoping that many would hear it and that the beaches will become a better place to be. Let's give Isaiah a round of applause. So that brings us to the end of our first category. Yes. Song. And now we move on to our second category, art. From the secondary school category, St. Judas Convent Castries, we have an art piece by 13 year old Malaya Laura of Form 2. We have a video in which Malaya will describe to you experience out of which that painting emerged. My name is Malia Laura and here is a brief explanation of my art piece. The piece is entitled Mother Nature, her fate is in our hands. The piece features two female heads, both symbolizing Mother Nature. The head on the left shows the outcome if we were to continue mistreating the earth. It shows pollution, devastation, distress and wildfires. The head on the right, however, shows what would happen if we took great care of our beautiful planet. It shows happy animals, clear waters, and flourishing forests. My art piece was made to show the implications of positive and negative behaviors on the environment and the part we play in the future of our planet. 
I think we're having some technical problems there with um, Malaya's audio. However, we will just let me say that Malaya's painting depicted two heads facing each other, male, female, and the heads were somehow she looked at what is happening in the head, reflecting what's happening in creation. Some beautiful things, but also the destruction of creation. It's a pity we didn't hear too well a uh, video, but we shall move on. Our next category, the group winners, it's from St. Mary's College, St. Lucia, 13 year olds from Form 2. The group comprised of Hiru Jolly, Marc DeVoe, and Verlon Francis. And what that group did was that they took an old freezer, some of the junk you'd see by the roadside, and they worked on that old freezer and transformed the old freezer into a mural. And the mural was an aquarium in which there was life. So it was, it was the symbolism was that, you know, out of the kind of stuff that we throw away and we degrade creation, we can somehow engender life and beauty. And this is the, the presentation, the aquarium by the group from St. Mary's College. Best head for St. Mary's College, secondary school, St. Lucia. <laughs> And we do the, the winners from Trinidad and Tobago, the most southern island of the Caribbean. We have Amaya Wallace from Kirab Fatima RC. Amaya, who is six years old and second year infant, is a budding artist, powerful message on littering and using recycled material. Obviously, her parents and teachers would have been seriously involved in assisting her and coaching her. And we commend them for that, given her age at six years old. Let's give Maya a round of, uh, Maya a round of applause. Hi, my name is Amaya Wallace and Lebanon. I am six years old. My school is Kira Fatima Arsi School. The waterfall was made out of her school and there are two more waterfalls in the box. I recycled some some of uh, this juice box cardboard, and I even used the one of this. You know, what makes a a waterfall less beautiful is that people litter. So do not litter like litter bug Charlie. This is this. We use an operation project for the challenge. I hope you have a nice day. Remember not to litter like little bug Charlie. Always recycle. And, and remember, listen to the sounds of creation. From the next the next one is from Standard One. Jay Langdon. St. Patrick's Newton Girls Primary School, seven years old. Jay did, she was inspired by a waterfall, blue be beaches, bright flowers, and fresh air. And she thought God made a beautiful world for us to live in and enjoy. So she used art to show some of God's creation. And she created that piece. Let us give her a round of applause. Our next winner is Kiel Suraj from Vance River, RC, that's in the south of Trinidad and Tobago. He's 10 years old, a standard three student, and he won in 2021. He captured and reenacted an enactment of Moses' encounter with the burning bush, an angel, and the voice of creation. A very beautiful depiction. And he feels that, that we are to trust in God's presence on holy ground, and that there's a urgent need to address climate change, global warming, loss of land, ecosystems, wetlands, 
A lot of thought, creativity, and imagination went into his piece. He Maria, also, Maria, we think we have a video from Kellen there. Yes. He also used recycled materials and the things at home. And there's a video showing us his piece. Good day. I am Kalel Suraj. I attend the Banjava Roman Catholic School. This is my art project. I reuse, reduce, and recycle with cardboard, paper, and things at home. I did a remarkment of Moses' encounter with this year team. The burning bush, an angel, the voice of creation. I have illustrated with the rising sea levels around the world due to climate change. We can prevent a lot of disasters by building sea walls around the most crucial areas between seas and land. My art project shows that these sea walls can prevent flooding, soil erosion, loss of land, and preserve animal lives and their habitats. Thank you. God bless. Our next winner is Megan Crosby from St. Patrick's Newtown Girls R.C. back in the west of Trinidad, north of Trinidad. And she's 11 years old, a standard five student. Megan said her joy and conviction is in the sun. And she did a video, an art project. It's called A New World. My name is Megan Crosby and I am 11 years old. I attend St. Patrick's Newton Girls RC School and I'm a standard five student. The name of my art piece is a new, a new World. My art piece is about how the world is going right now and what I want it to be like. My art piece is made of paper, plastic bags, zip ties, and color pencils. On one side of the earth, we have a picture of the polluted water, tombstones, and factories that make smoke that pollute the ocean and the air. On the other side, we have recycling bins, a clean ocean, trees and flowers with kids playing. I enjoy doing this art project and I know that I'm doing my part to help this world become a better place. Ariane Hosain from Trinidad and Tobago, Holy Name Convent, Port of Spain. Ariane is 13 years old from Form 1. She was impacted by Karen, swamp hibiscus flowers, pui trees, and sunset reflecting beauty everywhere. And she wanted to demonstrate, to capture that beauty. And she did some art pieces to display, to display that really nicely done. Let's give Arian a round of applause. And I believe there's a video showing her art pieces. Yes, it's done in acrylic. Then we have Corpus Christi College, a group of Rian Campbell, Rihanna Armstrong, and Quiana Tangri, 15 year olds from Form 3. They did a sculpture, again, depicting creation, and uh, there's a video. Hello, everyone. My name is Rihanna Campbell, Rihanna Armstrong, and Kiana Tangri. We created this sculpture inspired by the burning bush, where the Kentucky Park symbolizes what the has done, and the second half depicts what we have done to eat. This sculpture was created using recycled water bottles, recycled plantains, wires, and a color. The first station was the cutting and building of trees for the building of infrastructures and all the way are damaging the earth. Our sculpture tells us that we must continue to trust and have faith in God, as He is the one to keep things in balance, and without Him, we will be in challenge. Hi, my name is Kira Smith. I'm Maya Sullivan, and today we are talking about our painting, The Renewing Fire. The materials used for this painting were star lamp, hot glue, and acrylic paint. We were inspired by Exodus chapter 3, verse 1 to 12, where God appears in the form of the burning bush. As you can see in the image, on this side we have destruction and devastation, pollution for water, and 
dry lands. And on the side, we can see the beauty of the earth where God is present. On top of the earth, we have God's hand and also the renewing fire. The renewing fire represents the burning bush. In God's hand, the renewing fire is to show his power and how powerful he is. And his hand is to show that he can renew the earth into a better place and make it better. Thank, Thank you for listening to our presentation. And on, another winner right now is on, under this category, Corpus Christi College, from three 15-year-olds, Maya Sullivan and Kyra Smith. And they did the Renewing Fire. And we congratulate them. Let's give them a round of applause. And now we're going to the honorable mentions. So th th those are students who did Beautiful productions, but we could not actually give them a, a winner, so, but we felt that they deserve to be mentioned. We have, first of all, Vanya Noel from the St. Rose Modern Second School in Grenada, 12 year old from Form 2. Vanya, you can see from the, um, the painting here, she uses the concept of uh, climbing up the scale, going up to the bush. The bush, yes, the bush. The bush is captured there. And you can see, you can see her indicating how as a little child she the need to go up, show reverence for the bush, reach there and to savor what is going on in creation. Let's head for <laughs> our second honorable mention is Rian Superville from the Sacred Heart Girls RC Primary School, eight-year-old standard two. She participated in 2021. And Rian has given us a beautiful sunrise and sunsets or sunrise in which the glory of Francis would say, the glory of creation radiates, the glory of the rising sun, the setting sun, radiates in all creation, the blue skies, the blue, the, the seas, all of the things that God gives us to savor. And as an 18 year old, as an eight year old, the sensitivity to creation is a subtle thing that gives us hope that our children will grow up and tomorrow's generation will truly appreciate creation. Let's big up Rianne Superville, give her a big round of applause. Hello everyone, I'm Rianne Superville and I'm eight years old and I attend Sacred Heart Girls RC School. I chose the sunrise as my inspiration for my season of creation artwork. My paintings show the sun as it rises high above the mountains each day. Seeing the sunrise each day reminds me of the warmth of God's love for us. Thank you. And the next honorable mention is the primary school, St. Xavier's Private School. 10 year olds, Prep 4C. They are Mickey Antoine, Andre Charles, and Drew Cornell. They have depicted, as you can see before you, a tree that represents the, the earth, but it's actually cap capturing the earth, the leaves. They are, there's the destruction all around through the Waste, this waste disposals and so forth. You can see them hanging from the trees, but then above, cradled in the tree, like almost like an egg, is the earth. The earth that can be saved, but is being destroyed. And our challenge is to save that earth. So let's head for the children from St. Xavier's Primary School. Our next honorable mention is from St. Mary's College Mukurapo Girls RC. 11-year-old Amanda Birasi from Standard 5. Amanda depicts an open field in which there is the freedom of movement for play, for, for animals to roam and so forth, for, for all the good things possibly to be done, but also the littering, the, de the de degradation. So the potential for preserving but also the temptation to waste and destroy. Beautifully captured by 11-year-old Amanda Bedassi. Let's head for her, please. 
And we move to the next category, category number three, skits. And we have the island of St. Lucia, group presentation. The winners were from St. Joseph Convent Castries, forms one to two. And we had a number of people taking Adria Maturin at Autumn King, Majani Maraj Malakan, Steve Bradley, Michaela Alfie, Malaya Borneo Brooms, Natalie Gustav, and Rick L. Penal. It was a combination of poem, dance, song, an engaging presentation, captivating the cry for the preservation of the earth. Well done, St. Lucia, St. Joseph Convent Castries. Let's give them a big round of applause. Then we have in the primary school category, St. Charles Sinopuna Girls RC. Nine-year-olds from Standard Free. And they did, again, another skit, which sensitively depicts the challenge of preserving the earth and the conflict of waste. And yet still, as children, seeing the need for us to be ambassadors, climate ambassadors, to preserve the earth. Let's head for St. Charles, Tinapuna Girls RC, Standard Free, group winners. Secondary school, we have the Holy Name Convent for Spain, 13 year old from Form 3. Again, this is skit. We're hoping that you'll be able to see, see the skits as, they, as we post them online later on. But there again, those are the students who are taking the concept of the preserving of the, uh, the waste, the challenge, and what can we do about it? How we can be preservers, advocates who help to save the earth. Let's head for the whole name convent for the Spain, 13 year olds were the winners, secondary school. And our next group is from St. Mary's College, Port of Spain, 15 year old. They produced a short film called In Another Shoes. The group comprised of Matthew Bikhu, Sean Michelle Solomon, Jordan Hamlet, and Yannick Thomas Brown. And Matthew participated in 2021. It is a lovely little skit as they listen to how at school, when the break time comes, so many people can go and have their break. And yet still, there is one poor, one little student who alone has nothing to eat. And the insensitivity to that need, but also the sensitivity on public others who eventually reach out to him. So it was a very, very um, sensitive interaction in a very practical school situation where the students saw the need of their neighbor. So wow. on, an, on another, in another shoes. Let's head for St. Mary's College, Port of Spain. Yay. Then we have St. Patrick's Newton Girls RC, five to 12 year old, a dramatic presentation by Axia Walter, Ariel Das, Delia Charles, Kaelin Lane, Rian Seals, Soleil Hill, one of our uh, MCs, um, so Sophia Albocas and Talia Das. These students came together and again, as a group, they danced, they sort of improvised, did almost the, the kind of poem dance using mm -hmm. creation and the need to help creation, the need to preserve the earth, the need to protect our environment. Let's head for St. Patrick's Newton Girls RC. They also won in 2021. They won in 2021, yes. Uh -huh. yes. And then we have our honorable mentions under the category of skit. We have Asaria Singh from St. Paul's RC School in Hard Bargain Primary School. Asaria is seven years old, a second year infant. She also won in 2021. 
and she captured the dangers of wildlife. And it caused her to say no to people throwing cigarettes out, out of their vehicles that are also a contributor to that. And, and her call to family, friends, and everybody else to help us preserve God's creation by not throwing out those cigarette butts. Very powerful message from a young, a young participant, seven-year-old Asaria. And our un other honorable mention is from St. Thomas, RSC school in Mayaro, primary school, 12 years old, 12 year olds from fifth standard. They did a very um, practical demonstration of honoring the people in Hopeland and how, you know, when garbage is dumped, how people are affected. And the call was for cooperation with each other to achieve individual and community goals clean up activities, cause communities to grow and help each other. Very nicely done using their own distinct talents. Let's do a big warm welcome to St. Thomas Mayor RC and congratulate them. Once again, we, we apologize that we really couldn't show you the skits because um, it would be too, too long, but you can go online when I'm sure the Season of Creation Challenge 2022 will pose those kids so you can see the efforts put in by those students in their production. We come now to the eco project category, off of category. And secondary school, one of our winners is St. Mary's College Castries, 12 year olds and from Form 1. And what the students did was that they went to the beach and did a cleanup effort and gathered the amount of garbage that was littering the beach that one would normally not see. But when you put them together, you can see the amount of garbage that is there. And they demonstrated a film how that garbage gets into the water and pollutes the water. And the polluted water comes back and throws it back on the land. So people throw garbage into the sea, into the rivers, goes to the sea, and then lands up on the beaches. And so St. Mary's College 12 year olds did that project in which they collected, they cleaned up the, the beaches. Let's head for St. Mary's College. Our next winner is St. Rose Modern Secondary School, 12 year olds from Form 2 in Grenada. Kiwana Williams. She participated in one in 2021. And she did a beautiful little birdhouse in which she demonstrated how we can care for the creatures, like Francis, care for creatures and nurture. And instead of attacking them and destroying them, we can provide a home, a welcome for them. Let's head for Kiwana Williams. Our next winner in the youth group category, the only youth group we had, Youth on Mission, 18 year olds. They participated in one in 2021 and 2020. 2020. From Grenada, of course, it's the JLM's group. They always do exciting things. They went on the mission into the hills and they, through the forest, they picked up things and they used that. All, all around them, whatever they could see, to demonstrate the sensitivity to the things that we have around in creation, especially in the forest, how we can use them, how we can preserve them, and how we can become climate ambassadors. Just simply for going through a walk through the forest, opening our eyes, our ears, our hearts, and being sensitive to creation as it speaks to us. Let's head for youth group, youth on mission from Grenada. And our winners from Trinidad and Tobago in the primary school category, we have Israel Singh from St. Paul's ROC School Hard Bargain. Israel is a six year old from first year infant. He captured the harm done by wild flower, wildfires. He felt Mother Earth needs us to protect the earth from wildfires. And he did an eco project of fire damaging and destroying homes. He used biodegradable materials. And if you saw the video, you would see the process of the project evolving. 
and him being ably assisted by his mom. It was such a vivid imagery. Congratulations, Israel. Let's give him a round of applause. Our next winner was Kalani Caesar from Kirep Fatima Arasi School, primary school, 10 years old, third standard. Kalani captured sight and sound of water and birds chirping. And he created an indoor fountain that created a sense of relaxation. Again, putting us in tune with nature and the impact of nature on us, not just for us to enjoy, but to also calm and relax us. Let's give Kilani a round of applause. In the secondary school category, Dominic Savio Baritario, we had fifth standard class, 11 year olds. They did a green wall and try to capture the joy in doing it, not just doing it, but there was a lot of, if you saw the video, a lot of joy and communication going on and they use recycled materials. So they used the um, old soft drink bottles to create that green wall. So using that material, they generated food and it was a very interactive team building exercise for that standard five class. Let's give them a round of applause. In the secondary school category from Presentation College, San Fernando, we have Form 1, 13-year-old Ethan Jagmohan. Ethan did a solar oven where he stared at the sun rising over the water and listened to the sound of the waves clashing on the beaches and felt a burning need of the sun like the burning bush. So he created the solar oven to survive and rebuild God's creation. Let's give Ethan a round of applause. And our final winner in the fourth category, it's from the parishes from Holy Cross RSC Church, over 18 year old Terry Richardson. Terry is no stranger to the se season of creation. He was a winner in 2021. And he did a video and pictures of various beaches and, and pollution. It inspired him to make a more conscious effort to recycle more. And he made a vegetable garden to grow vegetables and help people. Let us give Terry a resounding round of applause. And that completes our awards. We now come to the honorable mentions for the Eco Project. Yes, honorable mentions. We have quite a number of honorable mentions for the Eco Project. We have Aiden Torres, we have Manny Otley, Jeriah Roberts, Chris Tout, Mikhail Ramjag. These are all beautifully rendered efforts by our primary school. Jeriah Roberts, for example, is from Curep RC, eight year old from Standard One. We have Eden Torres. Eden Torres is a Arim Arima Boys RC, six year old, first year from the Arima Boys Primary. We also have Jeriah Roberts, QREP RC, and we have Chris Tout, eight year old from Arima RC, standard two. We have also Mikhail Ramjag from QREP RC, 10 year old standard. And all of those honorable mentions are efforts by these students who have used either recycled stuff or they've looked upon the things that we have in creation, how we can use them, how we abuse them, and they're making suggestions as to how we can preserve our earth. So let's say for all of those honorable mentions, those young children who are at their tender age are sensitive to everything around us, to the good around us, as well as the damage that's been done, to creation, as nature speaks to us, and the being impaired, as it were, to do something about it. Let's say for all our honorable mentions for our eco projects today. So we say thank you here for having us as presenters today. I would just like to add a, a, a word of, um, of thanks to, to all of our judges who worked so hard because there were so 178 items of all different categories for us to judge. 
And what it revealed is the tremendous work that the Franciscan Institute has really engendered throughout our islands so that we have our young people, our students being sensitive to creation, to everything around them and responding to the challenges we are being climate ambassadors. I think we really deserve to big up the Franciscan Institute, big up people like Sister Kathy and Sister, Sister Julie. By the way, let's congratulate them again. Congratulations to Sister Julie for being appointed assistant again, General. Um, yes. I think we should big up, we should big up for that. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I also think our day, Maria, <laughs> we, 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 Maria, we cannot um, we cannot forget that we you know we've lost a great another great woman, Caribbean woman, you know, yes. Yes. sister sister Gabrielle Mason of the Clunings, you know, who had a great heart for for the creation, a great heart for for Franciscan heart in a way. She's a Clooney, but she had a Franciscan heart, and yeah. she cared for the earth, and like the, you know, so we thank God for. I ask the Lord to give repose to the soul of Sister Gabrielle Mason. Even as we thank God, the joy of people like Sister, Sister Julie and Sister Jillian and the others and Sister Cathy and etc. Thank you. Wow. Those were some really interesting pieces and I hope to see you all next year. We now give a round of applause. We now would like to welcome St. Patrick's Newtown Girls RC Primary School. Winners! of the skit category in Trinidad and Tobago and their piece entitled Voices of the Poor. Enjoy. no words that was such a good piece uh we would like to say thank you can we get a next round of applause for my co-host wow all right Some more? the bird bath this eco project was inspired by a visit to mount hartman bird sanctuary during our visits i saw and heard so many birds but not a water source in sight the climb to the top of the hill was not as bad as the heat and the sight of the nearest water source, which seemed to be miles away. At first, the inspiration was not there. We brainstormed ideas, reflected on the theme, but nothing had not quite fit the theme. Then I stared around my room and noticed the fan I, I had staring back at me. And then it dawned on me. There are so many fans out there what if we recycle them and turn them into something new? And so the bird bath was created with the use of plastics, old fan parts, and a tad bit of left leftover mortar, along with a few other materials. The, the bird bath was constructed by the great team effort. When we began, we were not sure how the end product was supposed to look. And we soon realized that not everything was going to plan. Juggling with time management and distractions, along with the mistakes 
along the way, we worked tirelessly and overcame the challenges as they passed. One moment I could recall is when we had cut the wrong part of the van to use the support. Oh, how frustrated and angry we were. But that didn't stop us and we adjusted and adapted. Now, all in all, we felt eager and excited to do the project. And altogether, it proved to be a challenge, but it was fun, exciting, and an amazing experience. Thank you. Okay, that was Youth on a Mission from Grenada. Did you know that during the season of creation, the Sisters of the Sorrowful Mother Congregation and their ministry, the Franciscan Institute, prepare a calendar of activities which aids each individual in their walk to living harmoniously with our common home? No, no, I did not. Please tell me more. Well, some of these activities are avoid single-use plastic, plant a tree, share a smile with someone, pray or sing the canticle of creation. Along with these and so much more, the sisters post daily reflections as part of their participation in the, on the Synth Action platform. They share this guide on plastic policies to inspire other communities to avoid plastic in their daily routines. We now go to the most outstanding awards. And now, the moment we have all been waiting for, the most outstanding awards. Starting with Grenada, Cariku, and Pitti Martinique. The most outstanding secondary school St. Rose Modern Secondary School, Guav. <laughs> the most outstanding parish, St. Peter's RC Church. And the most outstanding youth group, Youths on a Mission. <laughs> Moving on to St. Lucia. The most outstanding secondary school, St. Joseph's Convent, Castries. The most outstanding parish, View Fort. And last but not least, in Trinidad and Tobago, the most outstanding primary school, Curep Fatima RC. The most outstanding secondary school, Corpus Christi College. The most outstanding parish, Mary Immaculate Queen of the Universe, RC Church, Book Malatris. And the most outstanding youth group, St. Patrick's Newton Girls, RC School. Wow. Our Caribbean children uh, and youth are very talented. We are so proud of you. Let's hear a big round of applause for all our youth. Today, we have two special guests who are going to share with us their own experiences, taking part in the Season of Creation Challenge. Let's ask Malia Francis from Kids for Christ St. Teresa's Parish, Saltaba, St. Lucia, to share on their experience. Although it was a, not a new thing for me to walk that community, doing it with the awareness of appreciating and loving God and wonderful earth made a big difference. Now, I understand better why we should take care of the environment and what will and can happen if we don't. Seeing the present condition of the nature, natural dam in Guayabua made us feel sad because we could not enjoy a ride on an unavailable man-made raft since the dam needed to be cleaned and maintained. There was grass everywhere and looked 
we looked we looked dam yet years ago this dam provided water for neighboring farmers irrigating irrigation purposes for the reason our kids for christ grew planted three fruit trees which are growing very water water source as a step revitalizing and creating change awareness of taking care of the creation of god has blessed us we we hope that our action may lead others to do the right thing in helping to take care of the environment always we had a picnic and we drew some pictures And it wasn't a good experience. Thank you. Thank you, Belia, for your inspiring sharing. Next, we have Zion. He is from St. Anthony's College, a Form 5 student. He goes to my school, everybody, and we love to big him up. Zion, come up here. everyone. Oh, him, right? <laughs> My name is Anne Valenor, as Dylan said. I was asked to give a speech today on the impact that participating in the past season of creation competitions has made in my life. In order for me to do that, I must start from the very beginning. In 2018, I joined a poetry club with Mr. Paul in the library. This allowed me to increase my confidence and thus enter the season of creation competition in Form 1 for the first time. To my surprise, my poem was well received and both Dylan and I were successful at the award ceremony. After that day, I realized that poetry can open so many doors to me. In 2020, with the support of Mr. Paul, I decided to dive into uncharted waters by attempting a spoken word piece. It was definitely a double-edged sword, as I was a bit nervous and happy at the same time. Let me explain. I was nervous because I was not accustomed to speaking in public or on camera. I felt happy because these new opportunities allowed me to develop and hone these presentation skills. With my newly open eyes, I, had get, I entered again in 2021. I once again submitted a spoken word piece. I was under understandably less nervous. And with the help of Mr. Paul, I placed second. Over the years, my writing and performance skills have flourished, and I would encourage everyone to explore the full potential of their writing. Recently, I was able to put all these learned skills to use when I was asked to be a part of the discussion on TV6's program, 16 to 60. I was able to represent my school by speaking on the education and environment in Trinidad and Tobago. Imagine that, a 15-year-old boy from nowhere who's previously known for his lack of social skills made it all the way to a major news network. These competitions have not only played a part in my vocabulary, but it has also helped me overcome my antisocial tendencies. Here I was, now able to express myself on such critical topics on a program that was being broadcasted internationally. Another real life example of how these skills has helped me is within my school life. For example, I have become a better English student and my progress can also be seen in my SBAs and exams. One of the major takeaways of the season of creation competitions is that it helps us students recognize the impact we humans have on the environment. 
It also makes us aware that none of us are too small to inspire change in improving the quality of the oceans, forests, and air. It shows the deep connection we humans have with the environment and how changing our bad habits would not only benefit us, but all living things on this earth. In conclusion, the Franciscan Institute has given each and every one of us an outlet to express our creativity, whether it be through poetry, song, or painting. When I submitted that first poem, it was simply for mere fun, but throughout the years, I became determined in improving my craft. I was motivated to become a champion for the, con for the conservation of the environment and also to advance upon my presentation skills from the previous year. One thing I'd like to leave with you all today is that practice really makes perfect. I summarize this by one of my personal quotes. Trial and error makes me, me. Without it, who knows where I'd be? Certainly not here, that's for sure. And that, my fellow peers, is one of the many goals all participants are meant to achieve with these projects. Thank you everyone for listening, and do keep up the incredible work. Wow. Thank you, Zion, for journeying with us. Um, we would now like to introduce a musical celebrity among us. Her name is Clarice Bipat. Clarice took part in the years of Season and Creation Challenge and won in the song category for her parish, Mary Immaculate Queen of the Universe RC Church. Her song was inspired by her encounter with two injured baby parakeets whom she rescued. Let's hear her rendition of the voice of the wildlife. May I introduce Clarice Bipat. Good morning. Amen. 
Because now I'm attached to you, Yoko. Your brother flew away. I know you want to find him, Yoko. Your wing is all better. It's time to let you go now. May the trees, the skies, may the world give you the sweetest treatment for the sweetest bird. Spread your Wow, thank you Clarice for that beautiful singing. Now we uh, go over to Soleil. Uh, yeah. Now we invite Hiru Jolly, Mark DeVue, Fulon Francis from St. Mary's College, Kashi, St. Lucia to share on their project. Good morning. Hi. On behalf of St. Mary's College and our visual arts group, um, our piece is about preserving the importance of God's creation, specifically the ocean, and what we need to prioritize before we no longer have a chance to prioritize it. So, um, basically, this is showing that. Hey, this is the beautiful ocean. While it is clean, it has healthy fishes, sea life, coral reefs. Um, and as the, the other host pointed out, Mr. Anthony, the fridge also symbolizes that we are reusing something that would have otherwise been thrown away and um, contributed to pollution. So that's basically it. Um, Mark, would you like to see what you did and everybody else? We have a slideshow. Slideshow. Yeah. We have a slideshow if you want to share this screen. Mark. Mm -hmm. We have a slideshow. <laughs> <laughs> this was a sun in it, getting it ready to be painted. Go next. Sun in the thing. Painting it white to put a background. This is putting coral on it. Painting coral on it. 
this is our final piece. We have fish, coral. It's very bright and colorful. Keep, this is how it will look with a clean ocean. So let's keep the oceans clean. Keep our oceans looking nice. Everybody likes to see bright colors. So let's keep it that way. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, thank you. Yeah. Well, that was our presentation. I hope you liked it. <laughs> thank you, Hero Charlie, Mark DeVue, Verlon, and Verlon Francis from St. Mary's College, Castries. Now, we, we will now be moving on to Most Reverend Bishop Clyde Harvey, Bishop of the Diocese of St. George's in Grenada to share his congratulatory remarks. Yeah. Good morning, everybody. And my apologies if the lighting is not as good as I would like it to be. First of all, congratulations to everybody who has been honored in some way this morning. I was saying congratulations to everybody who has both been honored as a winner today. And congratulations to the Franciscan Institute for organizing this. I want to say a special word of thanks to Sister Kathy Hannigan, who's been there. We haven't seen her face. But this whole thing began under her watch as General Superior of the Sisters of the Sorrowful Mother. And it continues. She has laid down that burden, passed on that baton, might be a better phrase. And we thanked her for encouraging as things went along and that she can now see the fruits of what has happened. My dear young people, Pope Francis continues to remind us that reality is better than ideas, stronger, more effective than ideas, greater than ideas. And that means that what you have in your head is one thing. But when you make what is in your head become a reality that you can touch and feel and hear, a reality connected to your senses, that that has greater power than the ideas that remain in your head. So I want to thank you for what we have seen here as that creating of realities, which can be vehicles of change. Yesterday morning when I was thinking of this, what came to my mind was what do I feel guilty about when I think of the season of creation, when I think of the, the, the ecological struggle and so on. And I want to put that question to you. What do you feel guilty about? Do you feel guilty about anything? Because what bothered me was that I really felt that, for, for example, creation and ecology and so on didn't come up in my confessions, <laughs> you know. And um, for us as human beings, what we carry as a sense of responsibility for, which leads to guilt, is something that we have to ask ourselves as a serious question. Do we really feel responsible? And my answer to that question of what I feel guilty about came in the afternoon, um, because what really struck me that afternoon was that I stood up in a room where there was a meeting, and I was giving out plastic bottles of water. And we do that all the time. We hand out plastic bottles of water. The SSM sisters usually walk with their own water in a container. But most times we buy a case of these small water bottles and we give it out to people. And it struck me then in the light of that earlier question, you know, do I have any sense of responsibility for what that causes? Because it's not only the plastic bottles that end up in the waste, but it's also the water itself because so much of that water is wasted. In fact, I asked somebody yesterday, what do they do with that? And they said something to me I found interesting, that at the end of a meeting like that, they put the water into a container and they put it into a, um, a um, electric kettle. And that's how they use the water rather than wasting it. That's a little thing, but it struck me as a very useful thing to think about. So what I want to invite you to do is to really ask yourself again, beyond the projects in your ordinary daily life? Is there anything that you're doing that really contradicts all the things that we talk about in these projects and so on? And one of them for me, as it turned out, was that simple thing of handing out plastic bottles of water when we have a meeting. 
we are in a very, very fascinating time. And I'm glad to talk to young people. A six-year-old, wow, you know, six-year-old, what will you be at 16? Kids for Christ, what will you be when you're teenagers? You know, how will this whole project that you're on influence your life then? And um, we're in this global village, we still are, and we are seeing how the war in Ukraine is affecting all of us, not just the people in Russia and Ukraine. But can we really engage with this whole question of the season of creation and taking care of, of, of Mother Earth in ways that help us to see the connections? There's another thing that came to me the other day, um, just thinking about this, because I had never thought of it before. I saw a program about this um, braiding and the false hair. <laughs> you know. I say false, some people say, no, it's not false, it's false here. And people have been telling me whenever I raise the question of what are you, what are you using that for? They may say, oh, this is not, it's false here. It's, they say all kinds of things. But what has struck me recently, there was a fantastic program on the BBC, which pointed out that a lot of these long braids that you use and so on, more and more is becoming plastic. So it's not just plastic in a bottle. It's plastics on your hair, on your head, you carry. And uh, they were showing how most of that plastic, when your hairdressers are finished with it, when they take it off your head, they dump it. And that ends up on the garbage heap. Now, there are two things about that which struck me. One is, why do we have to be false about our hair? Why do we have to go about this business of taking two hours to have this thing done for us? And in fact, in the process, creating an opportunity for the destruction of the earth. That's one thing. But what was wonderful about it in a part of the story from Kenya, I think Kenya or Uganda, is that some people became aware of the problem with this. And they began to go on the dumps, collect these plastic bits of hair, and they had discovered a way to trans to change those plastics, to transform those plastics into a biodegradable material. They took out some of the chemicals through a process and they have made it into a biodegradable material, which they can then sell. And this is an interesting movement, which I just want to put to you today. As you develop whatever projects you develop, it's going to be very important, especially given the hard economic times are coming to us and especially those of you already teenagers to think about it. How do I allow my concern for creation become income generating for me and for others? Very, very, very interesting question because as these young people saw the damage that the plastic here can do, they then decided if we can take up this project and turn it into income generating stuff. In other words, it becomes hair as well, but different kind of hair. And in that way, you make a contribution to the life of people here and now. A lot of young people are getting involved in projects which really generate income for themselves and their families. And we are headed in the Caribbean today, if we are to believe our economists, into a very difficult period. And I want to suggest to you, think about it. Do not be limited simply to winning a prize, right? In your own imagination, ask yourself how you can become a prize for others, somebody who through your work and so on, you're able to help others to become better people. Ultimately, and this is finally, as I watch you all and as I hear you all, and as I feel a certain pride in it, I think part of Clarice's poem was a line why should anyone dare to hurt you? Ultimately, we are saving creation, but we must never forget that a part of that creation is us human beings. And so I hope that as you take part in these projects and competitions, you will not only honor the creation in, the, in different ways, the things that are created, but you will also be able to use what you do as project, as encounter, as ways of relating with one another to create better human beings as well. God bless you richly. Pray for us, poor sinners. We 
bishops, we like to think that we are leading you. But in many ways, my dear young friends, you are leading us. And you have to help us to see the way forward. Because long after we are gone, you will be there loving God's creation, even as God loves us. Thank you, and God bless you. We thank you, Bishop Harvey, for your kind words. As we close, we invite Most Reverend Charles Jason Gordon, Archbishop of the Archdiocese of Port of Spain, to give the closing remarks and blessings. But Bishop Harvey has said so well, so eloquently, in the witness that you have given to us and the witness that you give to each other and the witness of your care for the earth that is really important to see the, the consciousness of your generation. We made a mess of it in our generation. Growing up, we didn't think about it at all. You, you have now a chance to do what we never did. And, and that is reverse the tide. And, and to really think about our connection with Mother Earth in a, in a very different way from, from the way we saw it. When, when we were young. You know, listening to all the different presentations, seeing all the congratulations, all the different um, groups and individuals that have been honored, that have been recognized as doing amazing things on behalf of creation, it, it really struck me how wonderful, how gifted, how beautiful you all are. You, you, you have brought something to us as church in your imagination and in your, your, your innocence and in your desire for connection with the earth that is new. And uh, I, again, with, with Bishop Harvey, I congratulate the Franciscan Institute and uh, the mother, the sisters of the mother, sorrowful mother, mother who has really championed this initiative. They, in, in all and, and so much touched me in everything I, I saw and, and, and all the presentations. But I just want to highlight one, one feature that, that really speaks to me of the importance of this event. And that's a young man from St. Anthony's College, I think his name is Zan, who talked about his journey starting as a, as a very timid, um, socially awkward young man and how this space gave him the confidence and the learning space to be able to grow and grow and to reach on to, to national TV and, and to do it with a, with, a, with a measure of confidence. And then seeing him speaking today with, with such a wonderful confidence and, 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 and such a great reflection on, on his journey and, and how this space has helped him to become who he is right now. And, and I just pray who it will help him and each one of you to become who you are destined to become as you, you grow into to whatever it is God desires for you. That kind of encapsulates my sentiments about, about this event, that it really offers our young people a space of growth, a space of maturation, a space of coming to confidence. But, but it offers, together with that, a consciousness a consciousness of, of our responsibility as we, we come and see Earth as our mother. So Pope Francis calls the Earth our common home. What a beautiful image. There's a, a, a Rapso artist called Brother Resistance who has a, a song that as I was listening to you just started to, to, to beat through my heart. And, and his lyrics go, let my vibes be one with you, Mother Earth. I only want to know you. I only want to know you. To know you is to love you, Mother Earth. Is it too late to save? Is it too late to save? Is it too late to save, Mother Earth? From you comes all material things, provider of food when I hunger, fountain of water when I thirst, oh, Mother Earth. Centuries of seed that you planted. Blessed be the fruit of thy womb, Mother Earth. So much harvest you deliver, yet we take you for granted, Mother Earth. Your beauty, 
we defy. We take the trees in the forest, distressing the ozone layer, polluting the water with our sidereen and toxic rain, Mother Earth. I only want to know you. I only want to know you. To know you is to love you, Mother Earth. We have this wonderful gift given to us by God, Mother Earth, our common home. If we, if we understand that, then as Bishop Harvey invited us in very, very concrete, tangible, practical ways every day, we could do something to help the healing of Mother Earth. And, and that healing can happen. That healing is possible. That healing is what God calls every one of us to. So I just want to pray with Pope Francis, the prayer of St. Francis of Assisi, that we all, we all become more, more conscious. We, be, we all grow in confidence. We all see as integral to our vocation, the care of the environment and the care and love of Mother Earth. All-powerful God, you're present in the whole universe and in the smallest of your creatures, you embrace with your tenderness all that exists. Pour out upon us the power of your love that we may protect life and beauty. Fill us with peace that we may live as brothers and sisters harming no one. O oh God of the poor, help us to rescue the abandoned, the forgotten of this earth. So precious in your eyes, bring healing to our lives that we may protect the world and not prey on it. That we may sow beauty, not pollution and destruction. Touch the hearts of those who look only for gain at the expense of the poor and the earth. Teach us to discover the worth of each thing to be filled with awe and contemplation, to recognize that we are profoundly united with every creature as we journey towards your infinite light. Father, we thank you for your tremendous love and we pray. Sensitize our hearts, awaken our conscience, fill our imagination with ways that we can protect, love, and serve you and all those that you have created and all things that you have created, that we may see our role as servant of the earth and protector and carer of the earth, servant of the poor, protector and carer of the poor, that as we recognize our responsibility more and more, that you will give us courage to grow and develop into the men and women you want us to become, that we may find greater and more innovative ways to protect our common home and to keep her safe. And I ask a blessing on each one of us gathered here, especially those who have been recognized as champions and, and as those who have been notable today. I pray also for everyone who submitted something to this competition, whose names may not be heard or may not have been remembered, but we ask God a blessing on each one of us, that through this care of creation and through this, this exercise that we do every year, that we may build a consciousness for caring for your creation and a resilience for Mother Earth. We make our prayers request our Lord. Amen. Thank you, Archbishop Charles Jason Gordon, for your special blessing and inspiring words. In all things, we give thanks, inviting one of the regional judges, Sean Samad, to give the vote of thanks. Good afternoon, all. St. Ambrose, one of the four doctors of the church, said that no duty is more urgent than that of returning thanks. 
And so it is my humble duty today to return thanks to all who in various ways have given up their time and treasure towards this project. On behalf of the Sisters of the Sorrowful Mother and the Franciscan Institute for Personal and Family Development, we express deepest gratitude to participants and awardees of the Season of Creation Challenge in Trinidad, Grenada, Cariacou, Pitti Martinique, and St. Lucia. Principals, teachers, parents, parish priests, and youth coordinators in the three dioceses, we thank you. To Archbishop Gabriel Miles there of the Archdiocese of Castries in St. Lucia, Archbishop Charles Jason Gordon of the Archdiocese of Port of Spain, and Bishop Clyde Harvey, Bishop of St. George's in Grenada. Thank you. The, to the Honorable Karen James, Minister of Climate Resilience, the Environment and Renewable Energy in Grenada. Sister Julie Marie Peters, Director of the Franciscan Institute. Sister Gillian Jerome, Dele Delegation Superior to the Caribbean. Distinguished members of the Laudato Si Movement and the Season of Creation, Sister Sheila Kinsey, International Coordinator of UISG Campaign, Sewing Hope for the Planet, we thank you. Distinguished Regional Judges for the Season of Creation Challenge, Maria Samad, Frida Shim, Daniel Shim, Ronnie Lewis, Bria Lucas, Monsignor Patrick Anthony and Nicole Gomes, we thank you. All our performers and presenters participating in today's program from the three islands, the Franciscan Institute JPIC committee members, the sisters and staff of the Franciscan Institute in the three islands, and all members of the planning committee, thank you for all of your work. Principal of St. Joseph's, St. Joseph's Convent, San Fernando, Ms. Deborah East and her students for their hospitality and allowing us to use their venue to St. Joseph's Convent San Fernando Audiovisual team for their help today, we give thanks. All volunteers, ushers, photographers, Zoom media team in the three islands, we thank you for all of your contributions. Members of the media, Catholic News, Council, Trinity TV, for audiovisual support, Greg Rajman and Arden at Trinity TV and Living Waters Community, thank you. Greg and his team have been helping us for the past five years and today's program will be broadcast courtesy Trinity TV. To Raymond Sims and the Catholic News team for covering all our events in the past five years, we thank you. Best Net TT, El Socorro Wildlife Center, Catholic Youth Commission, Corpus Christi College, Chief Ricardo Barrett of the Warao Tribe, Environmental Management Authority, and all participants of the Season of Creation Challenge for coming today to display your work on God's care for God's creation. To Alicia Lezama and the children of St. Dominic's home, Arima, for their creative artistic labels to decorate the venue today, we give thanks. Our co-masters of ceremonies, Dylan Mohammed and Soleil Hill, along with their teachers, Mr. Christian Paul of St. Anthony's College and Ms. Penelope Spencer at St. Patrick's Newtown Schools, we give you thanks. Coaching team, Sister Dahlia Monrose, SSM, and Mr. Kadeem Hoyt, Ms. Penelope Spencer and Mr. Christian Paul, Mrs. Maria Samad, her family and staff at the Rain Tree Plant and Wellness Center for providing plant decorations and support for the past five years. And finally, to all our sponsors, donors and partners from the three islands and all those who have been journeying with us for the past five years, we thank you. Thank you from the hearts of your MC. We say goodbye and see you next year for another season of Creation Challenge. Don't miss it. We end with the closing song, Burning Bush. Ponder on the words and images of this year's season of creation theme. Listen to the voice of creation. Bye.
rather not consume the essence of every person. You show me yourself in creation, in all of the beauty that speaks and cries out deep that you are love. In a flower, in the waves of the sea, in the dawn, in the song of a swan, in a kiss of a child to his mother, in the farewell of a dying father, you are love. In a man who climbs the snow. I will be portraying the song of the wind. You are earth, water, air, and fire. The beauty of what God created it must not be destroyed. We must conserve and preserve. Oh my God! We have homeless people in Trinidad. Roxanne, please. We have homeless people here and all over the world. We're supposed to be our other people. But if we the poor and losers, they need help to recover. Recover, recover, recover. Yeah. 